There you go. I don't see the comments though. Does that come up on the sides with new comments? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It's Cindy and Christy with Candles and Supplies, and today is super exciting for me, anyway, because um, yeah, we're making wax macarons. I've been addicted to these, like since we were playing with them. Well, I've been addicted since we we played with our new fragrance, the pistachio macaron. So, absolutely incredible. I put it in a regular candle at first, but then I'm like, I kind of want it in like a on shape because that's super fun so then i got yeah. started making these and i couldn't stop and it, it's really fun and addicting so this is a very addicting episode just warning you <laughs> they're easy i guess it's easy and fun it takes you know you know, keep making them and stuff and they're fun different colors if you google macarons you get like all different things you can get so creative with it and it's so easy so i think that's why it's so addicting so it's instant gratification into fun things so sure um, you get different fragrances different colors there's a lot of options with it exactly it's so let us know give us a wave if you're out there make sure all of our technology is working everybody can hear us and see us and all that type of thing so i see some people yep facebook people instagram people welcome everybody. thanks for watching us so i'm excited today all right, so Christine has never made these, so she's going to be um, she's going to be uh, my test person here because I've been making them like crazy and they're super fun. But just to make sure that you know, I can teach you how to do this. I'll teach her how to do this. She's never done this before, right? First right. Time. Yep. Yeah. First time. <laughs> they're so easy that you can't really screw them up. So, and if you do, you just throw them back in the melter and remelt them. So. Sure. Lovely thing about wax. You can always Love it. it. <laughs> I know. I know. Sometimes I wait dinner was that way. I burn it. And That's true. Sure. It does yeah. not work that way. Oh. Okay. So obviously we're starting with wax and color and scent and everything. And we also have this macaron mold. Yeah. The mold is key. Otherwise, it would be really hard to make them. It is. Yeah. It would be really <laughs> hard to make them and stuff like that. And the thing I like about this one, so like for me, if you're duplicating a food thing, you should make it look at least as good or better than the food that you're duplicating. So a lot of the macaron molds on the market are like a one piece, one pour, but then you get that flat bottom for when you pour mm -hmm. the wax in. Well, sure. that doesn't look real. They're smooth and wonderful and delicious on both sides. Like see all these fun ones that I made. So yeah, I couldn't stop. All kinds of lavender, colors. pumpkin, yeah. <laughs> All different colors, but they should be smooth and delicious and yummy on both sides. So, so I like this mold, so that it because it makes a completely three D macaron. You can make it on both sides and everything, but it is a two piece mold. So you would pour the two halves, and I pre pour it in here so that you wouldn't have to wait a half hour for the wax to pull before we pop these out and use them. Um, so you pour both sides, and then you basically put them together. So, and that's it, it's very easy. <laughs> um, so we poured these in advance. Like I said, we wouldn't have to wait. We're gonna pop them out of the mold now. They just, they look like little halves when you pop them out. If you guys have any questions when we go along, post them in there. This is a very kind of fast, easy one. So breeze through this, but I don't wanna skip over any questions that you have. Um, talk a little bit about the waxes. So I did experiment with the waxes and everything, cause that's always a big question. Uh, what wax do you use? What wax do you use? So I experimented with all of the ones. I didn't use any translucent paraffins because macarons yeah, shouldn't translucent. be translucent. They have to be opaque, right? They have to be solid. They have to be opaque and delicious looking. So I cut out all of our translucent paraffins. Will they work? Yes. Will you want to put an additive in them to make them more opaque? Yes. We're not getting into that wax blending today. We're just getting into using the waxes that are already suited for making this. And all you need to do is add color and scent. Simple and easy. Nice and easy. <laughs> nice and easy. Yep. So the first wax that I tried, obviously, was soy, so our advanced soy pillar blend. And that worked pretty good. Um, I do have to say that, you know, it made like a nice, makes like a nice smooth macaron. So both of these are out of the soy. Christine will show you. Um, so they make like a nice, smooth macaron. It worked really good. Um, it did take a long time for them to cool. So it's a very shallow mold. And I felt like, I mean, me being impatient, I wanted it to be done in like 15 minutes, but it took a full hour before I was, I could pull them out of the mold. 
um, at normal room temperature here, like 75 degrees or whatever. So to me, to wait an hour for that, that was, you know, I didn't like that. Um, I like the way they look though. And I like how they, they melt down in the wax melter because they melt right away. And they're all soy. So if you want an all plant-based option, that's a good option. Um, it did, when I poured it cooler temperatures, it got a little bit of jump line. So show them that, that one. So when I poured it cooler temperatures in there, you can see the jump lines on it and stuff. So they just a little bit of white on the outside that looked quite as smooth and crispy as I wanted to. But then the darker green one, I poured it like a higher temperature, like 170. And we're going to have a complete blog post and instructions on this too. So you guys all have all the low down on it. It turned out better. It was nice and smooth and everything. And then I did have to be careful when I took them out of the mold because soy wax is more brittle than paraffin. It's not flexible. It has no sense of humor. So when you take them out, be super, super careful that they don't break. Um, so I used that one. And then I went from all soy to all paraffin. I used our production color blend and I used our production voted blend. I like both of them equally. They made um, a nice smooth melt. I did that out of the, the pumpkin ones I did out of that. So they made a nice smooth melt, nice and easy to use. They popped out of the mold. Within a half hour, they were, you know, um, I wasn't afraid that they were going to break or anything like that. If I really mess around with the pouring temperature, I poured them at like about 160. If I went lower, like if I poured at 150 or lower, then they would pop out sooner. But, you know, I don't want to wait for you. You're waiting for the wax to cool or waiting for the macarons to cool. I didn't want to wait, so I just poured. But they turned out good each time. No problems at all. Um, the difference between the two waxes, the pillar is a little bit higher of the melt point. So if you end up, you know, putting a wick in it. Where did my wick want to go? I don't know. I lost it already. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you end up, you know, making a candle out of this with a little wick in it, like a little votive size macaron candle, um, I would use the pillar blend just because it's going to hold up a little better for you. As far as when it's burning, it's not going to get, you know, melted down as fast. The votive blend's very nice. It'll do the same thing. I would use, you know, like a cotton wick, a cotton votive wick or something, just something a little bit cooler. It should melt nice for you. It'll also make a nice wax melt. So they were perfect for a wax melt. So cute. Yeah, put in there. they are very, very yeah. cute wax. They, they scream wax melt or soap. So you can also use soap in this. This oh, is yeah. geared towards wax, but you can also pour melt and pour soap in it. It works good with melt and pour soap too. So um, you would do it the same way. Just pretend I'm saying soap instead of wax substitute. Use soap dye instead of candle dye. Same thing though, mm -hmm. it, makes, it makes really good macarons um, with soap as well. And then the last one that I used was our hybrid. It's half soy, half paraffin. Um, and that was actually my favorite because it gave me the nice, the creamy look like the, um, you know, like the soy wax does. Um, but I got the, it cooled faster like paraffin does. And it also was not as brittle as one paraffin. Yep. That's paraffin or that's the 1285. Okay, sorry. That's yep. Yeah. So they turned out really, really nice, nice and smooth. Um, that was actually my favorite one popped out of the mold easy. They melt down nice and easy. So. So that one will probably feature in our blog post as using, but I did try the other ones and I'll put in there, you know, the benefits and uh, pros and cons of each wax using it and stuff like that and challenges. That way, if you do decide if you want to do all soy or whatever, you'll know that, okay, it's going to take a little while to cool. I need to pour it a little hotter, you know, not to have jump lines. So that way it takes some of the experimentation out of it for you. Um, each of them also, it, this will make three macarons at a time. It holds 5.5 ounces of waxes or 150 grams. For me, it's easier to work in 150 grams because. Yeah. A more precise too. Exactly. You weigh out 150 grams and, you know, 10% is 15 grams. So you need 15 grams of fragrance. You know, my wax holds that. And then pour the wax in, uh, the rest of the, the wax into 150 grams. And then you only need one drop of dye. Sometimes one drop of dye can be very, very dark. So like when I went to doing a, the lavender macarons, I used one drop of dye in here and I got this dark color. Well, that wasn't quite the color that I wanted. You know, that would be very good for, you know, a different type, like a blackberry or, you know, black raspberry one. Actually, this screams black raspberry vanilla because it's got black raspberry and then the vanilla in the middle. And then what I did is add, just added another 150 grams of wax and got that lighter lavender color so I could get the lavender macaron. Yeah, that's up. We'll put all these ratios in our blog post. Oh, I mean, you use diamond dyes too. That wouldn't be as strong. You could. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you could use diamond dyes and stuff. So any of the dyes will work. That'll give you a more nice opaque color too. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's less yeah. messy too if you have those around. This is a good way to test your colors out too. Mm -hmm. So if you have your colors and you don't know what they exactly look like, this is a good way. You're not committing to a lot. 
going to be, you know, whatever whatever color you want and stuff. So um, it's going to show you nice representation of the colors in your wax, too. Um, I did not try this with any type of, of the coconut waxes or the soy, just plain soy waxes, because it's too brittle. You know, you're handling it a lot and stuff like that. It's its own shape and stuff. I just feel like those waxes are a little too soft and too brittle. I'm not saying that you can't do it, but um, that's the type of thing that, you know, could frustrate your life and make you curse. So I didn't do it. I stuck with something that I knew would work. Try to make things easy. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So um, to make these, you just heat up the wax and pour it in the mold. Wait your half hour. So we're going to pretend that we did all that. So that's in basic pretty, yeah, making. So, pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. So the next part is where you want to put your two pieces together because we get the two halves after we pop them out of the mold. We want to put them together. They're not going to stick together like it is. So what you do is just save a little bit leftover wax. And this is where Christine's going to do it. So you have a throw, question? I do. I was going to throw a wrench in your things. Do it. Um, could you just like heat gun them? Both sides of this I tried together. that. <laughs> yeah, I tried that. So what that does, if you if you heat gun, so like we're only going to put a little bit of melted wax on one side. If you heat gun it, um, I tried heat gunning both sides and then putting them together. That was kind of a pain because what I lost all this cool detail. So you see, you got like little crumbs are on the outside, like they're not crumbs, the filling, but the, the filling yeah. part of it. You have lots of nice detail when you heat gun it. That's the first thing that goes, and then it becomes all smooth, and then it goes around to the bottom. And you got wax drips on the mess. bottom. Yeah. So I wasn't successful at that. That didn't work out so well. So, but that was a good question. I forgot that I even tried to deal with that. So <laughs> try to move on from your failures, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody, if you're going to try things that don't work out, just move on and go to the next, next best thing. So let me grab some wax here. So this is already melted a little bit too much. So I melted it, let it cool. I'm just going to heat it up with heat gun. Things over. Yeah, yeah. We've had times where if you guys have watched us like do the crumples and stuff, where we're just, just waiting forever for it to yeah. cool. So we're like, let's be on top of this time and uh, take the wax off so it doesn't you know, wait forever for it to cool. And now it's cooled too much. So you know, can never win with these things. Nope. Which one's that one? This one's the, the purple one, the lavender. All right. So, so what you want to do? This wax was already heated and cooled. It has a little skin on the top. You can see I'm like breaking the skin. And we just want it to be real thick and syrupy, right? If you pour like real hot wax is very thin. So we just want this to be syrupy. You're supposed to be doing this. I want to swish it around. I used okay. a little melting pot because the way I can see everything easy and it's easier to do. You showed them what it looks like, right? Yep, I showed them what it looked like. So yeah. So, so it's still it's very thick but still pourable. So, so what you're going to do, you have poured on, you only pour it on one side. You don't need it on both sides. And you kind of want to fill it up, but not overfill it. Leave a little oh, a gap around here. the outside. Yeah. Put a nice. I can't see what you're doing, so I hope you're doing it. We might be too cool. That was oh, okay. my concern. Okay. Yep, that's good. And even if you drip a little on the side, don't worry about it. Take the other half and put it right on there. Wax's temperature isn't that hot, so yeah, I can move it around a little bit. Just put the other side on the top. Yeah. Usually it should pour out nicer for you. And it doesn't matter if it oozes out, that's what real macarons do. So you can take that off at the end, just squish it together. Look at that, did I have no squeeze out? Yeah. And then it should stick together magically. All right, well, we got to the side, and hopefully we'll do another one. Or? Yeah, we can do another one. Okay. Do this one. So this one, it's already congealed. We let it get too thick, it congealed. I'm just going to hit it with the heat gun just to warm it up a bit. Get it a bit more liquid. Now we should be ready to rock and roll again. I always find that in between that's perfect. Yeah, there you go. Let you switch that around. Show them you're swirling. So she's just swirling. That'll cool it off. And also, it cools off real quick. In the resin, the 5.5 ounces, it leaves just enough left over to where you can put all your macarons together. Yeah. I tried pouring the wax on both sides and squishing them together to too have much. a little more icing. Yeah, too much went all over the place. So, again, not, not what was needed. Put a little bit more on this time so maybe we'll get some. Squishes, squishes through, yeah. 
Yeah. Smells lovely. <laughs> this does make me kind of hungry for macarons. I know, they're always so delicious. So expensive, and you just. They are expensive. Oh, man. Yeah. So, I'm gonna use squishes on the outside. Yeah, probably, That's fine apparently, I'm a light pour. That's fine, too. That's fine. Less mess, though. I exactly. like less mess. Beautiful. Move on. All right. So, here's white wax. This is completely not. It's completely oh, yeah. Do you wanna liquid. Show the differences between the. So oh yeah, that was. Let's go back to waxes. Let's let's rewind. Go back to waxes for a bit. So I also poured um, just a, no color or anything like that. So no color, no scent in wax. That yeah, use that one. Doesn't have a hole in it. So this is what the soy wax looked like. It's a more natural color and stuff. A very vanilla color. So very. If you're doing a vanilla macaron, it's excellent. And oh then, yeah, perfect for doing vanilla. Yeah, and then this is out of the paraffin. So it's very white. Yeah, so that's what they look like together. So you can see the soy is a more natural color, and which is, you know, it, yeah, it's food and it's fine. But if you're going for a coconut macaron, I would not use that. It doesn't look coconut. Yeah. If going for a vanilla one, it does look vanilla. So it is really white. I don't know how many bakery things can actually be this white. Yeah. But, so yeah, that's is that the same batch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this one's probably paraffin, and then this one's probably the twelve eighty five. Mm-hmm show those both. So the 1285 is a little more natural color, still very white. You can still get a 1285. Yeah. Do you guys paraffin is the whitest. Guys, we do much with beeswax blends. Yeah, so you can do beeswax as well. Beeswax works in this and you can do absolutely beeswax as well in here and stuff like that. So that works too. All right. So this wax is completely liquid in here. I don't know if you can see it. This is what's left over from there. If you just swirl it around, this will congeal up real fast. Like it's congealing up. It seems going to swirl it around. You're going to have to pour it pretty quick because it's just no, about ready. Like, yeah, barely anything in there. Yeah, that's all you need though. Keep it till so swirl it up till it's thick, but you just want it to be pourable. Yeah, it thickens up quick. If it thickens up quick, get your heat gun out, heat it up with the heat gun. Put your little heat gun on it. Yeah. Give it a quick swirl. You can go right on top, it'll melt that down there. Worst comes to worst, they don't stick together, and you just heat up your wax and pour it on. So it's a good way. This is a good way to play with your wax too and get to know it and everything. So I always say that get to know, know, love, use your product, know what it's going to do. You could also, if you're super, super fancy and creative, you could pipe the wax in between. And do that too. There we go. All right. So that's out of wax. Um, and that makes really nice wax melts. So the only, the easiest way to turn this into a little votive candle or votive size candle, um, get a drill bit with a seven, 764 inch drill bit. And then you can just take your macaron very careful. You want to go slow so it doesn't break. And just drill nice and slow. And then you can just put a pre tap wick in there. Super cute. Super cute. Makes it into a little candle. Uh, yeah, so you can do those by themselves. You could also put it on. We have the the seventeen ounce like luxury tumblers and stuff too. You mm -hmm. can put it in like a candle too. It's a cute little on a candle. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be so cute with some macarons sticking out the top. All right, that's why I figured you know, like some little ones like kind of in, some on the side. Yeah, be super yeah. cute. Yeah, they do make so. a good garnishment. Actually, yeah, you can put them in the tumbler. Too. Yeah, but yeah, for one would probably fit in the tumbler too. So you probably do one that looks like, or you do it on the top and just put the yeah. wick, wick through it. Sure. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> this is a little sneak preview of, of your jar we're watching. Because your favorite 
live stream people. Yeah. So this but, is a new uh, drawer that we got in. Yeah, yeah, we could definitely like pour the candle in and then just like stick this on top. And yeah. Like a garnishment, you pour it in and stick it on top. You're probably gonna see that idea on our website. Yeah, that'll definitely be a thing later on. Yeah. Now that sometimes we don't think of everything and then we're just talking and things and happen so. into your head. that's what you i'm know. the most creative so yeah <laughs> if you guys have any questions post them yes, in there I see definitely of, hello yeah. from new york city from florida from tennessee yes. so, yeah. how definitely. do you add the wick which wick okay we just went over that so yep. drill it and throw it in there yep just drill it and put in a pre-tab wick um any type of votive wick will work so you can use the hind cd4 you can use the cotton votive the zinc votive you know any type of wick will work whatever whatever wick series that you're using there's a votive wick for that one so, okay, we're gonna scroll you guys have anything else yeah, see if our Instagram but, people have um, any questions they so. make cute wax belts definitely they do. perfect they do. for wax belts and they also they're easy to package too so like these fit we can fit eight of these in our little uh the pie box that we sell for our four inch pies you can fit eight in there we have a clear box display that fits about 10 in there they go like um, real ones like how the back rooms are sold in the yep. clear boxes a lot yes stacked yeah. together because they're fun and colorful and everything so yeah. so they're fun to package too you could use a cello bag so whatever yeah, you can do that you could also do um you shrink wrap them individually. You could do like a mix pack and have a bunch of different ones. Mm, the same. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't do it without the shrink wrap. Yeah, that would the keep the sense. Would blend, but the sense. Yeah, Let's separate shrink wrap them yeah. together. Nice little mix. Aren't they fun? They're very. Fun. I told you they're fun. <laughs> yeah. So they're just quick and easy. It's one of those things. It's uh, a lot of um, AMSR in your mind because you're just working with your hands. It's nice and easy. It's you know creative without breaking your brain so they're just yeah. a lot of fun. like sometimes you need a break you, you, you do you do it's like them. a good relaxation thing a good yeah yeah they yeah they were fun so and there's lots of different scents i mean literally like i googled uh, best-selling macaron flavors and like so many of them go into like candle scents and oh soap yeah scents and stuff so yeah yeah, it's like I mean, and no vanilla, calories. lemon, pistachio, mm -hmm. strawberry, lime. Like, there's mm -hmm. so many different ones. Great. So, yeah, lots of different ones. So, and there's no calories. I didn't even gain any pounds. That doing is all this, true. So that is the value of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. That's all we got. That is nice and easy. So, thanks for joining us today. So, have a great week. Stay cool out there. Make some macarons because they're super fun. So. Yeah, they uh, all the addicted? all the supplies for it is on our website. So yep. click on there, find that. We'll put a blog yeah. post in the next couple of days, and it'll all be linked there to make it a little easier for you. Exactly. And I put all the products that we use today in the email too. So the email that you got to actually come to this live stream, it should be in there too. So and if you didn't get the email, subscribe to our email, and you'll get it. <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thanks everybody for joining. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.